So, all right. So how do we stuff we already know? Yeah, how, and, and we we've covered some of these topics in previous live streams, but we're sort of going to package this all together finally and, and tie a ribbon on it, so to speak, because it's been something that people have been asking us a lot in in questions and in comments and that kind of a deal. Um, and it's a it's a big topic, so we're going to do our best to to make it digestible, and hopefully somebody's going to get something out of this that's you know going to make you think and make some better decisions moving forward. But Let's just start with the fact that like not all animals are created equal, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's the case in within the same breed. Like so, you've got in. We're just going to talk about cattle for the sake of discussion. The same sort of rules apply to sheep, but we are we're not as familiar with it with sheep as we are with cattle because the system really is not developed as much as it is with cattle as identifying grass genetics, but there's there's some things you can think about with the sheep as well. And but some of it's the same as the cattle. Some of it's the same as the cattle, but for the sake of discussion, we're just gonna talk about cattle, and if people have questions about sheep, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. But anyway, so as far as cattle goes, not all cattle are created equal, and that's a case across breeds, but then it's also the case within breeds. So mm -hmm. you have certain breeds that are gonna be better grass-based animals or better beef animals. Um, just they're more efficient on grass. It's what what people have bred into that breed for you know generations. Um, and then, but then within that each breed in and of itself, you have a spectrum of animals that will do a lot better in a grass-based system, and animals that will require a lot more work in a grass-based system to perform, or just won't even, even perform at all. Yeah, and so fall apart. So from a producer standpoint, if you're looking to build a herd or improve your herd. Either you're looking to buy animals, or even if you're looking to cull, this all this whole this whole talk is going to sort of apply to that sort of scenario. But um, you need to be looking at grass genetics, mm -hmm. and so the big question is how do you how do you identify the difference between an animal that's going to do really well on grass and an animal that is going to get incredibly thin, and you're just going to have to end up selling to the sale barn or, or culling. And really, the thing is. In, in, in the cow-calf operation, um, when you're talking like cow-calf operation, your your paycheck is a calf. And so if she's not able to breed back and give you a calf year after year on grass, you know, that's cutting into your profit. So that's really what in the cow-calf operation that you're looking for. Then if you switch it over into the, the meat side of it, an animal that's, you know, if you're looking to do grass-fed beef or, you know, that, that kind of system, an animal that's bred and has the genetics to perform on grass is going to fatten a lot quicker. It's going to be a lot more pleasurable eating experience because it takes a lot less time and 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 and, and grass to to get the you know the finish on that animal. And so that's you know both sides of the beef industry. And there's like other benefits on other like mm -hmm. sides of it too. But um, both both sides of the 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 cattle industry are can be affected by the, the grass cattle industry, I should yeah, say. Yeah, that's really what we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. If the, as far as like commodity or, or, or conventional feed operations, that's not really what we're talking about. And then there's also like a whole nother deal with like show cattle. Like that's yeah. a whole nother, and we're not recommending any of this for show cattle. No, we're not recommending any, this any of this for- Grass-based- Grass-based genetics. Genetics. Um, What's gonna perform An animal that will eat a blade you. of grass and get fat. Exactly. You want them to look at a blade of grass and get fat. Just by looking at um, it. Sort of. Um, kind of. So, yeah. So, th I think that's a that's an overview. Let's let's just talk, let's just touch really briefly on breeds, because people ask this all the time. Mm -hmm. Breeds yeah. that work. That work. Or breeds that would more be... More desirable. Or, yeah. Or, yeah, or more desirable than others. And that's not saying that you can't find other breeds where you've got individuals in that breed that are going to do pretty well, but... And it's also not to say that every animal within these breeds is going to do well, but yeah. broad strokes, to look, breeds starting to look points. At. Yeah. So obviously, I think number one in the United States is the South Pole. That's like. And yeah, we're probably biased there too, but. But I don't know if we are, you know. It could be objective. Like, <laughs> it's not objective, it's, but it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's South subjective. Pole. That's what this is all about. It's subjectivity. It's yeah, our opinion. Exactly. But anyway. South Pole cattle. That's that's one, that's a breed that you really can't go wrong with. I would say as far I mean, <laughs> it's, it, a, it's 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 the this you're going to be heading in a very good direction. Yes. Let's just say that yep. if you start yep. looking at South Pole, I can't say you won't go wrong because there's some South Pole out there that are not bred right. Yeah. As far as like their genetics. Yeah. But the majority, 
as a majority of the breed, the South Pole is a good, very, very good option. Yeah. So South Pole, I would say, is number one. If um, you're if you're on small acreages, Dexters are super efficient. But the only problem is you're going to have a an issue with um, selling animals to the sale barn if that's part of your model. Mm-hmm. If it's not, doesn't matter. You're it's it's a really efficient animal on grass, but. If you sell them to the sale barn, they're just so small that you're going to take price docks as a result. Um, it's the same thing with the Aberdeen Angus or the low line, low line Angus. Yes. They're very efficient on grass, but if you if you take them, if you have to take them into the sale barn for whatever reason, people don't like them, and so you'll get a dock. You'll get yeah. You'll get just and so there's much. exceptions to every rule. I can hear people screaming in the comments section. There's exceptions to every rule, but yeah. still, I mean, broad strokes here. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, so, red Angus, Red Angus, a lot of Red Angus cattle will work because one, they've got the the right color for for being out on grass, and two, there's a lot of good genetics, good mothering genetics and stuff in the Red Angus breed. Yeah. Um, another one is uh, Galloway, not necessarily the belted Galloway, but the the normal Galloway, and 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 we've that's had this, we've had this discussion before. Um, but the belted Galloway and how you will also get a dock at the sale barn from ha- for having a belted Galloway. But Galloway will make really good, you know, they can they can they can eat a lot, lot less palatable forages, a lot less. Mm-hmm. They don't need as high a nutrition in order to do well. They, yeah. They're bred. I think they were in like they were bred in, over in Europe somewhere for like living in the mountains. Yeah. And what they've got is they've got like a double layer coat. So like in the winter time they'll have like a a coarse outer layer of their hair coat and then like a real fine almost like a duff inner of hair coat and so they do really well in cold wet climates because they, they can keep their you know their their body temperature up and they can maintain you know on condition spaces, at yeah. a lot lower or temperature condition. yeah I thought you were talking about body temperature <laughs> well they can yeah. maintain like they don't their feed requirements to keep their body warm, warm do yeah. not you yeah. know increase until like a lot lower temperature because what happens with cattle in general is when they when they get too cold they'll eat more in order to generate more aero- like like a bacterial mm-hmm. fer- fermentation activity in their gut which generates heat so they can warm themselves up and every cattle breed will get to a point where they'll start to eat more just to stay warm mm-hmm. and if if you're if you're a breed like highland cattle yeah or highland's Galloway, another good one highland's like another, another breed if you their tolerance as far as cold before they start to increase their feed consumption is um is a lot lower like they, they can withstand temperatures that south pole would freeze to death mm-hmm. um so yeah i mean anything else like uh, British White's a good one. Those yeah. those do those do really well. Murray Gray is a good good cattle breed. Yeah. They're an Australian breed, I Australian believe. Australian breed, I'm pretty um, sure. But Greg yeah. has a couple Murray Gray cows. Well, one cow and a couple heifers. And they're not full Murray Gray, but, but yeah. They, oh, they're so so pretty. I, know. I really <laughs> like the look of a Murray Gray. Um, so that's just to give somebody some ideas. There might um, be some, uh, Coriente. Yeah. Coriente is a big one for arid climates. I think you could do, like Hereford's not too bad, but yeah. it's just like. Especially here in Missouri, if you take yeah. any kind of Hereford to the sale barn, you're just going to get absolutely, absolutely. docked. Your, your lunch will get lunch just money will stolen. get stolen. Get yeah. stolen from you. So um, keep that in mind. There's um, a and the reason is just because I what there's a myth around the Hereford or myth. It, there might be some truth to it as well. But they used the, to have really good genetics, and then somehow they were bred, you know, for certain traits, which then became undesirable, and so then. If they were considered a, a bad breed, and then even though got this like bad. everything, there's 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 good yeah. Herefords and there's not so good Herefords as far yeah. as I wasn't like they were bony or Super just bony, bad like, cutability or whatever. Were, yeah, because they had so big of bones or something, they didn't have very good cutability. Um, I believe. But anyway, someone can someone can check us on that. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think that that's gonna give some people some ideas about the the breed situation. Okay, now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of this conversation, which is within the breed. If you go to somebody's herd, what are you looking for? Say you say you're going to somebody's herd and you're gonna buy, I don't know, five of five of their heifers or ten mm-hmm. of their heifers or something mm-hmm. like that. You're gonna buy some of their older cows. Um, what what are you looking for? Let's just let's just talk like irrespective of sex, like what are some things that, that you'd be looking for um, as far as 
things that are probably going to be doing better on grass. And something also to note before we even start this is that there's a, also another element of the fact that just by moving an animal from one environment to another, even if it's not that far away, if it's in the same state, there's always a risk of that animal based on your management or your particular microclimate or whatever, that there's going to be an adjustment period. And sometimes animals that look awesome and are doing really well in somebody's management, in somebody's environment, you take them over to where you are, despite the fact that you'll go through some of these checkpoints and be like, yep, 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 yep. Like this, checking all the boxes here, it looks like a great animal. You bring it on your place and then they just fall apart. It's just the risk with the, in the cattle business where With bringing animals, bringing animals in one place to another. Yeah. And bringing animals onto your farm as opposed to breeding animals from your genetics. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that's the ultimate. But again, most in order to get there, in order to get there you gotta start, start bringing them in. Exactly. And this is just stuff to think about because it'll get you a lot closer to an animal that's going to probably do oh, yeah. well. Like yeah. you're going to get rid of a, you're going to sort of self select out a lot of animals that might not end up performing. So, yeah. um, but still it's worth saying that it's not like, Oh, I, I, I made sure of all these things and they still didn't do well. It can happen. Mm -hmm. So it can happen to the best of them. I think, so let's just start. The first thing to really look at is your size. Yes. You know, size is, is a huge one in, in the, uh, with grass genetics, just because the bigger the animal, the more grass it takes to keep it going. So you think of it, Greg always makes the analogy and that he's preached this for, you know, years and years. So you, let's, let's do a hypothetical scenario Two 1,000 or three, 1,000 pound cows is the same amount of weight as two 1,500 pound cows. You know, three, 1,000 is 3,000 two yeah. 1,500 is, is 3,000. Those three, 1,000 pound cows will give you one calf each year. So you've got three calves at the end of the year. Yes, it's gonna be a smaller calf. We'll, we'll, we'll get we'll to that in a second. Sec. Your two cows are gonna be eating the same amount of forage as these three, you know, three 1,000 pound cows in order to maintain their body weight. Roughly, uh, yeah. This is like hypothetical, yeah. but it, it's, it's pretty much yeah. true. Um, you know, maybe not like exactly, but it's, it's, it's pretty close. Yeah. And they're only gonna give you two calves per year. So now by just getting that size down, you've gained an additional calf, um, calf per year. Now we talk about the calves, you know, you, you, I hear people saying, you know, yelling back, yeah. oh, well, well I'm, this, these 1500 pound cows are gonna throw a bigger calf for me, you know, and, and it's gonna grow out better. And yes, that's exactly what's gonna happen. You're gonna have a, you bigger, know, a calf. bigger calf. And if, if you're selling to the sale barn, those of you that know the sale barn know that you know, as weights go up, you know, from four to 500 is like a weight class. As the weight classes go up, the price per pound goes down. And so this, this smaller cat, these three smaller calves that you, you bring into the sale barn are gonna bring more because they're gonna be smaller, they're gonna be in a smaller weight class than the two 1500, or the two 1500 pound cat cows calves. Yeah. And, and this, so, it's very counterintuitive. Yeah, like when you yeah. think about it, you're like, how is that even possible? But then you start to think about on like who, where is that animal going? Mm -hmm. Like once it goes through to the sale barn and it's going to most likely some sort of a feedlot where they're trying to just crank through animals in a systematic way. And if you get an animal that's really, really, really small, like, you know, like Dexter small or whatever, it takes, well, first they're never gonna grow up, but it takes a really long time for them to, to, to mature out. And if you get an animal that's really, really, really big. I think it's really quick. It's too quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, they would it's, fill. They would finish too. They finish too quick. So yeah, because they're so efficient. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but the but the the animal if, if the animal's too big, like if the calf is big or the or the feeder calf or the stalker or whatever is big, you're also going to take a price dock because all of a sudden the animal's done. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's no it's going to gum up the system because you've got animals that basically show up and then they need to leave. They can, there's so. a set amount of time that they want that animal to be in their lot. Because so, the thing is, yeah, with the sale or the feed lots, they're making their money by how much corn they can put through a cow or feed, like not yeah. necessarily just corn. Um, so, because because like their biggest cost is like when they bring that calf in, they've got to get all their vaccinations and all, you know, make sure the calf's all caught up on all that. That's a big upfront cost for that calf. So if they have to buy in an, an older calf, put all these this this costs into it, and only feed, you know. 100 pounds grow 100 pounds of corn on that on that cop that steer yeah. before they have to butcher it you know there's not much margin there for them to make a profit whereas if they get a, a younger calf in there they're able to you know pay for that 
pay for those upfront costs and they've got a lot longer time to grow that calf out or that ste that stocker out until they until they sell it. So they, they make a lot yeah. more on those calves. That's why the price is a lot more. Yeah. So that's that's the reason why the smaller calves are going to bring more than the bigger calves at the sale barn. And for that's from a sale barn perspective. And mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people out there that have no interest in trying to sell stuff at the sale barn as, as part of their main business model. And there's still, I mean, there's massive advantages in that same scenario where you've got three calves versus two and you've got an animal that's going to be more efficient on grass mm -hmm. as in it, it like per pound of meat that it's putting on it needs a, a fraction of the amount of feed that the 1500 pound animal does just just to maintain the body body condition they're going to require a huge amount of feed let alone gain weight it's like yeah. it's like how I can't gain weight. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm tall, leggy, big old leggy, yeah, and, and thick, like, I can I can eat and eat and eat, and I stay the same weight because I don't have that big of an appetite. Mm -hmm. Like I have a normal, like a normal appetite or whatever, and so I can't gain weight. But mm -hmm. if somebody who's shorter and more stocky, if if you eat and eat and eat and eat, eat, you're just gonna put weight on, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you want. So it's the same, it's the same in the, thing. In the, in the grass. In the grass, yeah, I'm grass. a horrible grass genetic animal. <laughs> you guys are way more efficient yeah. than I am. And it's like Greg. Maybe that's know? why you like peanut butter. Yeah, it's a high calorie, high, high calorie, calorie feed. <laughs> yeah, as much of it, it's like, it's like corn cattle. Yeah, exactly. I'm peanut butter fed, corn fed. <laughs> Bump the peanut dude, butter, dude. dude. Yeah. Um, anyway, man, it was a tangent. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, size size matters. is a big one. That's size probably matters the a one. huge amount. Um, Plus, I mean, not only for like performance, but you think about in a grass-based system, what happens in the early early spring? It's called like we call it here. It's March mud month. You know, mm -hmm. the, the there's more rain than the land can handle in, in this part of the country. There's more rain than the land can handle. The the ground can't take it all up, so it's stuck there. And in, in like clay country too, especially, yeah. the forages aren't growing right yet to take that up and so what you're left with is a lot of mud and the smaller framed cows you know a thousand maybe 1200 pound cow is going to hold up a lot better on that muddy sod than a 1500 1600 set to 2100 pound bull like you're talking some serious holes put in your you, you'll be able to track it by just yeah. walking through your pastures exactly where you're he or she was. It's like driving a four wheeler versus like a, a tractor, a, like a tractor yeah. on mm -hmm. your on your pasture. Mm -hmm. You can zip around with a four wheeler flotation tires, a thousand pound cow, no problem. Mm -hmm. Big two thousand pound <laughs> commodity sized Charlet is like driving a big old you know, giant Andy. tractor on your. You're gonna sink all the way up to the axles. Yeah. So, yeah, they're basically gonna plow your field mm -hmm. doing that, and that's why a lot of producers in the springtime will lock their animals up because in, in a sacrifice lot. there's there's no choice like otherwise their whole and farm I, I would do the same thing absolutely but i wouldn't want them that's the advantage them. of having the smaller framed animals just wider they're just going to be able to they'll sink down like this far as opposed to like that far and it makes a massive it difference great greg's <laughs> back um anyway so yeah size 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 the when we say size mature weight for a cow is at most 1200 pounds preferably a thousand like 900 to 1100 pounds is that perfect. sweet that yeah. sweet range anywhere in there and that you know as a mature cow that's yeah. that's perfect your bulls can like mature a little bit bigger if you to wanted 14. to 12 to 14 but i mean like short squat 1200 pound 1100 pound bulls perfect mm -hmm. um, they can get the job done too. yeah for sure they can feed themselves a lot easier so that way they can focus more on breeding so yeah. there's an advantage there too mm -hmm. um okay size check Small animal. All right, I got I got a set of animals that look like they're about the right size. Now what mm -hmm. do I look for? A big one is your hair coat. Yep. If you've got a shiny hair coat, that's a that's a sign of of animal health. You know, like sh like shiny means like that animal's getting everything she needs or he needs. You know, forage is good. He's able to. You know, he's surviving or he's thriving, thriving. In, in that environment instead of surviving. Place. Yeah. And so that's a that's a really big one is the, the slick or the not slick hide but like the, even like with that hair if it looks real shiny and, and yeah. like you know the the sparkle of the sun on their back yeah. <laughs> like the yeah. sparkle of a new car that's that's what it, you know if you see that on the cow that's a good thing and the and the like you 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 said slick and and that's that's mm -hmm. also important too if you mm -hmm. have animals that you know are supposed to be short slick hides in the summertime 
and they're not fully shed off, especially if they're older. With younger animals, you can give them a little bit of a break because when they're younger, they're not gonna shed off as yeah. quickly during the spring. Younger is in a year and a half and below. Yeah, but if it, the animal is, is about is two years or in up and it's still hanging on to hair when it probably shouldn't be, that's that's a sign that it might not be performing as well as it could be. So if it's supposed to be slick, then it should be shiny and slick. It should look like you've armor all armor all your mm. your 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 animal or whatever. Someone's poured like vegetable oil down their back or something like that. That's what it should sort of look like. The animal that sheds off the earliest is the healthiest in your herd. Yep. So whether that means that they've you know got slick hide or not, but yep. the ones that shed their winter hair coat first, that means you know they're getting all that they need. And yep. they're able to just kick it. Yep. Yep. Okay. So shiny your your shiny hair coats probably you know I have it written down here that it's, yeah. it's the 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 priority. Then yep. after that now you look at shape because like the shiny hair coat just yep. it's an indicator of who's performing overall overall organ function of everything's body doing type. well. Yeah. Yep. So the, then you get into the more nitpicky side, and that's body type. So I got shiny, small animals. Shiny, small animals. Shiny, small animals. Now what am I looking for? Yeah. <laughs> now we're looking. You know, yeah, I'll hold this. So this is what this is what th a lot of these things are coming from a Steve Campbell. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it's like went to, but a lot of it is stuff it. that we knew beforehand. But it's like yeah. he like told wait easier ways to tell sort of packaged it up yeah. so it's easier to tell and a lot of this was done by work was done by gerald fry mm -hmm. and steve campbell worked with gerald fry for a number of years and so he's sort of carrying the torch so to speak of gerald's work mm -hmm. now that he's passed away but um yeah so what steve campbell calls this is the red solo cup cow but we've got a silver solo <laughs> cup. silver it's shiny it's actually made of metal this was here before we got here, but shiny, like, yeah, like you want your cow. Yeah, you want your cut. You want your cow to look like that. Maybe not <laughs> metallic because that'd be a little freaky. But um, okay, if your Murray Grays look like that, though, you're so doing good. so. <laughs> so let's talk about yeah, it's true. Let's talk about um, females. Females first. So this is a way you you can identify, or you can. Yeah. Yeah, identify your males that you want and your females. And the females that cup. you want is using this cup. So just pay attention to the head and the tail. The head is always gonna be on Ben's side. So in, in a in a female, this is this is a female, right? So her head's up here and her tail's back here, right? She's so on level ground, she's looking like she's walking downward, as in like her slope is pointing down towards her head along her back. Like her like her tailbone should be higher than her head is. I mean, like not. It's I, the, like, like as in as in like it's not like oh she's she's. <laughs> you want a big butt on your girls. Yeah, exactly. You you want you want you want like large hips. Yeah. And and a lot of the size and girth should be back here, not in the front. Mm -hmm. They should be really slight in the front, just sort of like a like a uh, almost feminine looking. If you want to want to go down that that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. but um. You want you want you want it you want bigger in the front, bigger in the back, smaller in the front. Looks like it's sloping downhill, and 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 underneath. I mean, as well. You mm -hmm. want you want it sloping uphill. Underneath. Yeah, uphill underneath, like almost the inverse. So it looks exactly like this. Mm -hmm. If you see a female that looks like this, or even if it's flat across, that's she has that's no a problem. Gut. No gut. No butt. No butt. Really big up front. Like she's she's not shaped like she should be, and and the reason this happens is because the the estrogen a female that is producing enough estrogen it'll shut off growth in the front end before the back end. So a properly balanced female is going to have smaller front end and a larger back end because easy calving, and that's where all the all the business happens in the back for mm -hmm. the females. Also with the females, so the hook and the pin bones, the hook bones. So if, if, you, if you guys are familiar with the death triangle, the hook bone is the bone right behind the, the, the death triangle there, like on the cow's side. So that's the hook bone, and the pin bones are the farthest bone of the hip back. It's like so right it's by like, the tail, kind yeah, of. Yeah, like, it's like the, the bone, like, you know, right, right, on, right by their parts. Yeah. And so that you want that from the hook to the pin bones to be as steep of an angle as possible. The steeper the angle, that means the, the bigger the birth canal is. That means the easier calving. That's yep. that's like when people do like whatever it's called. The measure they measure the. Oh, what's when you're measuring? No, there's a. Anyways, when yeah. people measure, people can like measure that to determine what like the the heifers and you know. 
yep. calving ease. Whereas that's like a visual way to, if it's, if it's sloping, you know, a lot steeper, that's, that's a lot, you know, a lot better animal just because yep. of having less troubles calving. And yep. also on that same kind of on that same note, their tail head, you want it to be, look like it's smashed in, look like someone took, like it backed up into a tree and smashed it up against its butt. Where the, the tail is just flat in there. You don't want the tail to look like poking it's out. Curved up or it's whatever. one of the most important things to look for yeah. at this point. Like we're gonna start to get into the nitty gritty details of like little things that you can look at that are gonna de potentially determine something later on in the future. And the tailbone thing, if you remember anything, the tailbone thing is, is, another big is one. huge. Raised tailbone is a growthier animal. So they're gonna grow a lot faster, but that means they're gonna need a lot more grass to grow. They're not, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be, you know, like the slower growing animals are gonna be more efficient on grass because yeah. a growthier animal, but when I say growthier, I mean like, you know, more leg, you yeah. know, can put, put a lot of, a lot of weight on it. They'll, they'll, they'll spend a lot of time trying to maintain their own condition and mm -hmm. not trying to give you a calf or mm -hmm. not trying to, you know, breed effectively. They're mm -hmm. just going to be eating, 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 just trying to keep weight, mm -hmm. um, which is not what you want in a grass based system. So that. That covers females. Yep. The in in males. Oh, also, a taller animal has fewer sex hormones. That's true. So what was the what every, was for the, every so for every hundred or I think it was hundred pounds, pounds over, over eleven hundred yeah. pounds, you lose like two percent fertility in yeah. your herd. So think about that. You know, fifteen hundred pound cow. She's she's got like six percent less fertility or whatever. Yeah. 8% less fertility. Math. But as you, as um, you then, get larger. And then that 1,100-pound cow. It, it, as you get larger. So that's another drops. benefit of having the yep. smaller frame cow. Yep. Is there anything with the udders that we need to talk about? You, you, um, want, you want clean udders. You don't want udders that are hairy. You want them to be buckskin. Um, like no hair and, you know, teats that are, you know, pretty pretty symmetrical. You, don't, you want the teats to be about level with the, the bottom of the stomach. You don't want the teats to hang down below the stomach. You don't want them angled. You don't want them angled. You want them, you know, nice, level, even teats. And four teats is great. If you, if a cow has six, te six teats, that is not a bad thing. That nope. is a, actually a really good thing. So with the udder, the way it works, so you think about like, you know the term like cream rises to the top? That's where, that's where, where it comes in is, in is milk. You know, if, if any of you know like, get raw milk or, or drink raw milk or unhomogenized milk or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah um you'll notice that when you go to get the milk out of the fridge there's about you know two inches of cream there at the top of the milk that's the same way in the udder the cream or the butter fat or the the good stuff of the milk is at that top layer and so cows that have four udders or, or big udders there's a lot of milk under beneath that you know that cream so a young calf is sucking sucking then the calf gets full before the, the, he gets to he or she gets to the cream and so a cat a cow that has a smaller udder and six teats and smaller teats smaller teats is going to have a lot more butter fat or cream to milk and so the calf is going to have a lot it's going a lot easier time to get to the cream and it's going to grow out a lot better better nutrition because that's the good stuff yeah the good stuff the good stuff yeah you're trying to raise a, a calf not yeah. Get milk. Yeah, exactly. For <laughs> yeah. milk production, it's the exact opposite. You yeah. want big teats because it's a lot easier to fit a milker on them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and you the the more milk a cow can yeah. hold. I mean, with the better with, off you're gonna be. There's obviously a, a point where yeah, but on with, grass, it's it's hard. To, yeah, but with and but then also the other thing is like if you got a cow with a massive udder yeah. on grass, it's just asking for scours in a mm -hmm. in a in, in this kind of an operation. And when a calf's born, a lot of times those cows that have massive udders, the calf, as it is, is has a hard not a hard time, but it, yeah, a newborn, you know, it's it's a lot to get up after you've just been born Morning. and find the teat and, <laughs> yeah. and get your first drink. And so if a mother has an udder that's sagging almost on the ground, size of a coke bottle for the calf, <laughs> the calf's pushing up to try to get to the udder. And a lot of times, if it's a real low udder, they don't they're not smart enough to go down low enough to get to the teat. Angle. And if if they don't get to it in time, they get discouraged and then they lay down and then they won't get up and suck unless you make them. And they don't have enough, and then they lose energy, and mm -hmm. then next thing you know, you have a dead calf mm -hmm. just because the udder wasn't shaped right. Yep. Okay. Bulls for males, it's the exact opposite. You want them to look like they're walking uphill on level ground. Think of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You want their <laughs> you want their front end to be built like a bulldozer. You mm -hmm. want you want this huge chest. Mm -hmm. 
and, and thick neck, just really built out in the shoulders. And the butt, you almost want like a tiny little butt. Like you don't, you don't want a big butt on your yeah. bull. I mean, big as in like, it could be round. It could be you round. You want it like big. Like, and, like, like big and like, like. Big cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want big cheeks. <laughs> you want. Small you want, cheeks. You want small cheeks. <laughs> small plump cheeks. <laughs> All right, easy there, buddy. <laughs> 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 You, you want your bulls to look like they skipped leg day. Yes, yeah, you, exactly. want, you want them to be oh, skipping man. every leg day. Oh, you man. want them to be only bench, <laughs> only bench. Um, so, and, and the reason being is the same reason, the inverse reason as to why you, as to why you want this in, in a cow. Testosterone shuts off growth in the back before the front. So, an, a, a bull that's just massive up front, you know, has a plenty of testosterone and probably is going to be an incredibly fertile. Um, so, shape-wise, that's something that you're looking for. Um, guts on bulls is an interesting thing because the gut actually doesn't necessarily translate to the fact that, that, that his, the females that he's going to throw out of his calves are going to have big guts. Um, it really, it's the depth of their chest that's going to translate to a big gut on a, on a female. And you want a big gut in a, in a grass based system because they can, they can consume more grass and have more grass working for them to, to put on weight. Um, so don't get caught up with, you know, oh, a bull's got a giant gut because it might not actually translate to what you think it will. Yeah, because like a bull doesn't need to have as big of a gut just because yep. it does not support a calf. It's only supporting himself. Yeah, so you want that. And, and the same thing with the bulls, like as we harped on this already with size, but you want it to be squat. You don't want a bull to be really tall and, and filled out. You want them to be like, like low to the ground, like it would be, imp- you need like to a bulldog. Yeah. Like a bulldog. <laughs> like it'd be really hard to knock them over yeah, is, yeah. is what, what you want. Um, four wheel drive. Also. So <laughs> you want their front front legs to be wider than their back legs. That's kind of goes along yeah. with the, the, the smaller in the back, like bigger in the front and with the cows, it's the opposite. You want their back feet. So if you look where the cow walks or a bull walks, you want to see his, his front steps, you know, you want to have two steps, Yep. You know, wider and, and two, two steps, steps narrower, more. and if you know, a lot of times you can tell which is the back because the backs have been left in the last print that's been left. Yep. And then the cows, it's the opposite way. Yep. So, um, other things to think about with bulls, you want to look at the testicles. Testicles on your bulls, they need to be even, and they need to look be shaped like footballs. You don't want them really round, and you don't want them super tubular. You want them to be sort of in between. Um, and you want that, that, um, the, the scrotum to be like a buckskin. Same thing with the, with the, with the udder on a, on a cow. Mm-hmm. You want it to be hairless and no teats on the, no on teats the on the, on the testicles. That is a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you want them to be up on the belly and then you want them to be uniform. Cause that, if there's teats and weird looking teats on the testicles, that's going to translate into weird udders for your calves yep. or for your heifers. I should, or your, yep. Your offspring, and as far as the sheath on the bull, you want it to be tight mm-hmm. and not too not too much hair on the, on the sheath because if it's too long or it's too hairy, you're gonna potentially physically you can get stuff caught on Catch it, and then and it stuff. can cause all sorts of weird infection, and it's just bad, it's just bad news. You want it to be tight and and compact. Um, so a bull's head should be half as wide as it is long. Yeah. So you want it to be like a whatever one to two. One to point five. Yeah, or, or or two to one. Two to one. Yeah. yeah, you don't want you don't want a long narrow face on your bull. You want him to be wide, like you want him to look like that wide head. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't want a big head. You just want a wide head. And a then, big head's also a problem. And then with cows, you want the same thing. One to two, one. one you want it half as wide as it is long, but then plus one inch longer on yeah. the bottom, if that makes sense. So, so the, like the cow can have a slightly longer face mm-hmm. than, than a bull, but you still don't want it to be too long. Um, so yeah, it's like two to one for a bull, and then two to one plus an inch plus an inch mm-hmm. for the for, mm-hmm. for the cow. So um, you also want your bulls to be darker up in the front. Yep. The, the darker they are up by the head and the neck area, that signals a lot of testosterone. Um, yep. You know, if they're kind of lighter up in the front, that's maybe not not as not as much yep. testosterone in that bull. And the same tail thing applies to the to the bulls too. You want to want to make sure that they're you don't have high tail bones. Um, um, and then 
What's what's something? What, what what's another one? Is that basically it for? Um, sorry. Um, sorry. More. The, so the more ear and and tailbone dandruff, if it's real yellow. Yeah. That's like a sign of of. I think it's either it's high butter fat, I believe. It yeah. Says on here. Interesting. And butter fat is a good thing. Is like translated as tenderness. Yep. Um, so you know it's a more tender, pleasurable yep. eating experience. Another way to, to tell t tenderness, as far as you know, cattle breeds is so there. If you think of like a cow's hock, you know that little space behind. Yeah, right there. That spot. <laughs> If you can, <laughs> if you can, if if you can like see that, and it looks like it's super thin, like it's just skin on skin, that means there's a lot less tendons and cartilage in that animal, and so it's going to be a lot, you know, pleasurable, eat, more pleasurable eating experience. Just less connective tissue yeah. and, and and cartilage. Um, um, obviously, you don't want to go up there and start grabbing. It yeah. Face, so. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on the animal, yeah. but yeah, we yeah. probably get. Kicked. I, think, <laughs> I think any animal would kick at that. I, I feel like I feel like if you scratched eight sixty four enough, yeah, you, though, you probably it. could do yeah, it. Yeah. Um, she might like raise her leg. Yeah. Away, but she wouldn't. Kick. You're also looking. There's what was the thing with the ribs? You're also looking yeah, for. Yeah. So with like a cow's ribs, the the straighter they are up and down, the more that cow is going to be focused on feeding and, and taking care of herself. As if they're angled back towards their, their hock, that means that cow is gonna do really well with taking care of her calf, if that makes sense. If you can, that one you actually might be able to feel. Yeah. Because you're not gonna get kicked coming in the side of an animal <laughs> for the most part, especially and, if they're docile. Yeah, and if, if you can just see the last ribs, if they're pointing backwards, that she's gonna do really good with her calf. I remember after Whereas, this. You know, if you think of like your, your stocky, yeah. Good looking, big gut, real square built animals. They're gonna do yeah. really good on grass for themselves, yeah. but they're not gonna raise very good to it. You know, they're not gonna do much for their calf. So angle to the ribs, not straight up and down. Mm -hmm. um, Think of like seventy one oh eight. Yep. You and know. yeah, I remember after we did this talk, I went over to eight sixty four and started pushing on her ribs, trying to feel <laughs> where they were. I'm pretty sure they're angled back a little bit. Yeah. Um, she's got a deep, a deep. Um, She's got a deep oh, chest though. Bulls, bulls, it's you want them. You straight. want them straight up and down. Bulls with vertical ribs give daughters with angled ribs. That's the that was the gut thing mm -hmm. where like yeah the bull you want depth. Mm -hmm. You want depth in, his chest, in, that, in his, that chest area. Yeah. You don't have to worry as much about the gut. Yep. It, yeah. Like the crit in like a higher testosterone bull is gonna give higher estrogen. Daughters with higher estrogen levels. Yeah. So it's like it's like fertility bull, is fertility. If you're trying fertility. to if you're trying to if you're trying to work on big guts in your cows, don't worry about breeding the bull for the big gut because yeah. that's a sign of est more estrogen in the bull, and that's not going to translate to more estrogen in your cows. Yeah. It's going to you know translate yeah. to it's less. Like it's just fertility. Yeah. You're sort of using testosterone and estrogen as, as a, a as a fertility like yeah. measurement almost, um, as well as like growth and whatever, but. Um, so and like a bull that's wide up front will give a daughter that's wide and wide back. Wide back. Yep. Um, man, that's it's. No, I think those are the big. Yeah. I think those are those are the big highlights. I know it's a lot of information, but just Here to. I got pigeon-toed bull is more fertile. A pigeon-toed bull. Huh. There you go. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I just wrote yeah. it down from the top. Um, but I think just to recap the big points that are to remember: size is huge. You want them maturing at. A thousand to twelve hundred max. That nine hundred to eleven hundred pound female mature weight is perfect. Um, and bulls can be a little bit larger at when they're hit maturity. They can get into that twelve to fourteen hundred pound range, but that's it. You don't want them getting any bigger. If they're smaller, perfect. Um, after that, you're looking for shiny hides, slick hides if they're supposed to be slick. Mm -hmm. um, shed off early. And shed off early. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then after that. Then you're looking at shape, and just remember the solo cup. Mm -hmm. You want your you want your females, your females to be small in the front and big in the back, and you want your males to be big in the front and small in the back. Mm -hmm. And then then and then just like the crushed in tail head. Yeah, smashed in. Smashed in tail head. You you don't want tail heads that are popping out. If you can remember those things, you're gonna be really hook, far along. Hook bone slant. That's a that's a big one. Yep, and the hook bone slant. Mm -hmm. Um, hook bones to the pin bones. You want it to be as steep of an steep angle as, as possible. possible. That's easier calving ease. If people are don't know what hook bones and pin bones are, just Google it because it's it's hard to describe. Well, think think about it, guys. Like there's 
the 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 one up in the front. I guess you don't really know the way yeah. how his anatomy works. Yeah. Just Google it. Yeah, just Google <laughs> it. It'll be it'll be easier. <laughs> and then after that, like you can rewatch this and 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 start to get into the nitty gritty, trying to really like select you know um, proper genetics or whatever. But those are really the big the big key elements. If you can hit all those. You're doing you're doing yourself some some serious favors to to be on the right on the mm-hmm. right path from the get go, um, and and those animals are probably gonna do really well on grass. So there so go, it is. Go look through your cow herd. Yep. And start, <laughs> that's what we did. That's what we did. Got we back got like, back. Whoa! Then started looking whoa. at high tail bones. Started looking at angles, deep chests. You know, mm-hmm. big in the back, the angles, the slopes, all that. So. It's fun. It's fun to once you once you start to learn about it and you start to go and look, you're like, that makes so much sense why she yeah. does so well. Uh, yeah, you know? I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if you go there to your favorite cows and you look at her like, and oh, she's just she hitting all the marks. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, and and like sort of intuitively, if you're around it enough, you can start to be. You just know, like, yes, like she's what we need to be, what we need to be striving for. But then when you start to put these actual indicators, th- then all of a sudden you're like, yep. She's, you sort of get this sense of like, yeah, she's good looking, but then you do this and you're like, yes, she's good looking because X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. you know, all the way down the line. Yeah. So it's cool. Super cool. Now you guys know. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and we finally got it out. And we're, and this is, this is all what we're learning. It's a learning process and we've learned, yeah. and we've learned more as we've gone on in doing this. And so, yeah, it's part of it. It was, it was, it's, it's, it's really a good interesting talk. talk. If you ever have a chance to go see, see Steve Campbell, it's a, it's an interesting, it's a thought provoking seminar to say the very least. He's put a lot of his, his energy and time into a lot of what he does. Yeah. So, well, with that, I wanted that to take as long as it needed to go. I know it was probably yeah. the longest one we've ever done, but I, I think it's going to, provide a lot of value to a lot of people. So we I just felt like we needed to yeah, flush that one out and to not, get that and one not just cut it short. Um, completely. I think we covered everything too yeah. that, I, that we can really think of. Yeah, this has been one that's been hanging on the list for a long time and it's just been one of those where we wanted to do it right, we wanted to do it right, mm-hmm. um, and now we did it. So anyway, Let's any, into the any questions. questions? I bet we get a bunch.